Hi everyone, I'm Grandmaster Brian Smith. Uh, the subject of today's uh, uh, class is going to be romantic chess, which is uh, defined as, uh, well, for, for this class, is from the dawn of time until the year 1880, uh, according to my understanding. So I've chosen a game uh, which was uh, played uh, by, well, the black player was uh, Joseph uh, Blackburn, the very uh, one of the top players of this time. His opponent was uh, named Gustav Neumann. I'd never heard of, I mean, I think I've heard of this player, but he, he's not someone who really went uh, in history uh, is very well remembered, but apparently he was a strong player because when I, when I looked for this game uh, there, uh, on the database, uh, their actual tournament games between these two players, uh, Neumann had won a couple of games. I think it was two wins and one, one draw. But this was a, apparently a, 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 uh, an off-hand off game where, according to what I read, I, there's notation here, I mean, there was notes by, uh, by Blackburn uh, throughout this, this game, which didn't really deal so much with the game, and more was kind of um, uh, very sparse notes that he made in, a, in, I think, for a collection of his own games, uh, but was not really so much about the actual game and just little anecdotes about. But in any case, it was apparently a, uh, it, it was an offhand game where uh, Neumann challenged Blackburn for one sovereign. Uh, so, uh, so of course it started with the King's Gambit. This was, by the way, this was played in 1867. I'm not sure where. It didn't, didn't say. From what I'm, I'm sure I could find the source, but I don't know. So of course it started with the King's Gambit. Uh, so the favorite opening of uh, Romantic Era. And uh, and uh, this is uh, this also an opening. I used to play the King's Gambit a lot in tournaments. It was my only opening against e4, e5 for uh, quite a while until uh, something like until I until I was uh, almost an IM, I guess. But it really, it's it's hard to play that all, all the time. So okay, so Black took the pawn, Knight f3, g5. And this was one of the biggest problems with the King's Gambit, just accepting it and protecting with g5. Uh, so now bishop c4. Um, this is uh, uh, this is a uh, this is a Cozio Gambit, I believe it's called. Uh, if, if Black plays g4 here, um, no one plays it really anymore. This this nowadays or for the last century or so, everyone has played h4 in this position. And after g4, knight e5, and it's uh, it's kind of dubious for white to got to admit, but it's uh, it's it's a fun game though. Uh, but the idea is to poke holes in the king side because one of the problems is this black has created this pawn chain g5 uh, and f4. And this is going to keep white's bishop from c1 from ever getting into. We have to break up this pawn chain. But in this case, white develops a little bit first. So bishop c4. Now. After g4, what do you think White's going to play here? I want to kind of get some idea about the level of, of players that are what people that are watching. What do you think in the front? Uh, well, knight, uh, yeah, knight g5, the queen would take. Uh, yeah, knight e5, but uh, probably uh, queen h4 check. And uh, this is, uh, I guess, this is kind of dubious for White. Anyway, normally what what is played here? Yeah, do you know? Yeah, this is an old gambit, and it's actually pretty dangerous for black, but I think it's, uh, I don't know if it's, no one plays it anymore, I'm sure it's not very sound, but, uh, and then, and then to play down a piece, but with, uh, black has problems on the f-file, mm -hmm. and, and white has the center, and it's, black's de development is going to, going to be a little bit, a little bit difficult. So, but that's not what black chose in this game. He decided to play bishop g7, just not taking the piece and developing uh, he develops the bishop, and he's going to strengthen his pawn chain. Okay, so white white now played d4. Black played d6, and white castled, and black played h6. So black's up a pawn, and uh, these let's see if this works. Oh, okay, it worked. Yeah, so these pawns are uh, are keeping this bishop on c1 uh, from, from being part of the game and also keeping the f-file closed. So if the things just go normally, black is going to develop knight e7 probably, knight c6, maybe castle. Uh, there's other things black can do, try to hit back with d5 or 
and some in some cases can play bishop e6 uh, when when black hasn't played knight c6 or other ways to prepare castle and queen side as well but basically white needs to get something going so he played g3 here so it, it looks a little bit crazy to open up the king side like this but if otherwise white's lacking a plan but the, the idea is to open the f file so for instance if black just takes then there's going to be a lot of pressure against uh, against f7. I don't think we can uh, I don't think we can uh, sacrifice right away. Although maybe it's maybe even then, uh, yeah, maybe bishop takes and and knight takes. Uh, um, yeah, I don't think it's really possible to do it yet. But uh, uh, yeah, actually it is. Well, anyway, yeah. So it's extremely dangerous for black in any case. Uh, so black's not going to take on g3. So he played. He played g4, okay? So here, white's idea, black's getting past pawn, but at least white has some squares for his pieces. His bishop is open, and, uh, uh, and so, okay. So he played knight e1, but this was actually turned out to be a pretty big choice. Knight h4, black would play the same move, f3, but it, it makes some, mm, some difference when we'll see what happens in the game, uh, because uh, uh, it blocks black's h-pawn. So on the other hand, of course, the knight on h4 um, could be lacking prospects in, some, in the future. f5 is going to be pretty easy for black to cover. This position is definitely still better for black, but uh, surprisingly well, the white king is relatively safe, and uh, white can try to build up in the center of the board. It's just that objectively black, is, black stands very well here. Uh, but he played knight e1. Yeah, so this is, this. by the way, this is uh, Blackburn's note here. Uh, this is what he wrote. Okay, thank you. Okay, so f3. Of course, again, black does not want the f-file to open up. He plays f3. And here, white played c3. So he strengthened d4, strengthened his d4 pawn. And he also lets, his, sometimes the queen uh, will come out uh, in this kind of way, perhaps. So black played knight to d7, okay, knight a3, developing, I don't know if it's necessarily the best, but it doesn't seem worse than the alternatives. Black should be better here, black's up a pawn, uh, especially now black has this plan, as we'll see in a moment. So, okay, so knight a3, black played knight b6, bishop b3, of course, keeping the bishop, queen e7, black's going to castle queenside most likely, knight to d3, so of course, uh, can black take on e4? No, right? Queen takes rook e1. So knight to d3. So the idea is, well, white's going to just play around this pawn here. You have the f4 square. We're going to occupy f4. White has these center pawns. These are, these are something. OK, so black played bishop d7 now. He's going to castle queen side. Knight f4. What do you think white's intending here? There's kind of an annoying move that white's intending. Most likely, he, if he gets the chance to, he'll play it. Anyone know? Yeah? Knight yeah, knight h5 could be uh, a little bit un uncomfortable for black because that bishop on g7 is an important piece. The knight on h5 is going to uh, be hitting f6 also. This kind of, so it's, it's making it, uh, it's, it's creating some lack of confusion, lack of coordination in black's position. So anyone know what, what do you think black should play here? Any ideas? Uh, yeah? H5. H5, yeah. Knight of six was also playable. Um, but you have to watch out for the move E5. Maybe he was worried about that. But um, but H5, so this is Blackburn's note again. This is what he wrote. H4 is coming. And it's going to be very hard for white to deal with. Now, objectively, the evaluation of this position is completely lost for white at this point. I mean, h4 is coming and white really doesn't have any concrete threats of his own. But that's not all that's going to happen. So this is a very fun game. It's not been too impressive so far, but we'll see what's going to happen soon. White played queen to d3 here. So I think that it was time to start considering a move like h4. Uh, and then if black takes it, then uh, queen takes f3. And here, white has some, some f-file 
some pressure. He's, he's liberated his pieces. Still not very good position for white, actually, but most likely black wouldn't do that. Most likely after h4, he would just castle queenside. And it's also a bad position for white. Uh, at least his king is somewhat safe, though. Black will have to arrange to attack g3 and h4 pawns, maybe sacrifice on h4, maybe just try to attack g3. In the long term, it's, white has no real attack on the queen side. So there's, uh, it, it should be winning for black, but it's a little bit, little bit uh, more complicated. But white played queen to d3. Black played h4, of course. Knight to b5. So he's trying to create some kind of threats. Now, what would, who, there's a lot of good moves here for, for black. Um, well, several good moves for black. What would anyone want to recommend what they would play? I don't know if anyone's going to guess the move that Blackburn would Blackburn actually played. Anyone ideas? Yeah. Anyone? Uh, yeah. Castle yeah, Castle Queenside. That's the most natural move, and it's far better than what Blackburn actually played. But Blackburn's move was creative and romantic attacking style, and it was also a offhand game in a, in, a, in a cafe for one sovereign, most likely, whatever that was worth at the time. I don't know. But oh, sorry, yeah, he actually, you're, you're right. H takes g3 first, right, exactly. We should first throw in this. This is correct. Should take on g3, yeah. I mean, castle's queen side is also possible because it's going to be the same. But, yeah, should throw in this capture because white can't take c7 now. If white takes c7, King attacks the knight, so I have to take the rook, and now what does black play? Anyone know? Are we going to take with the pawn on h2, or take the knight back, or what else? Yeah? Uh, maybe rook h2, queen h4. Yeah, rook h2, of course. So rook takes h2. Oops, sorry. Uh, queen h4 is also good, by the way, but rook takes h2. And who, who sees the threat for black? There's a, the strongest threat, the most immediate enforcing threat. Yeah. Well, rook g2, knight takes g2, oh. so not quite, but uh, yeah. Uh, rook, h1. rook h1 and queen h4, right? So this is the biggest threat. There's no defense for white here. Rook h1 is a threat. Also, queen h4 is a threat. So white can't uh, after takes. White has to take back. And now, like uh, like he said, castles queenside was a very good move. So what if white takes the a pawn? King b8, now that lose another tempo. And now this would be like the game, except, well, we'll see what the game was. White has nothing at all, and his position is collapsing. Uh, we'll see that even this position where black's down a rook was the same kind of thing. It's also not so, um, it's not so good either for, uh, so, okay. I, so instead of that, though, Blackburn didn't want to defend c7 some other way, and he didn't want to allow knight to d5, eventual knight to d5. So he played c6. Maybe he just wanted to sacrifice the rook. So that's what he did. Okay. So, uh, even at the time, they noted the game, or they, they annotated the game in this, in uh, some journal of the time, called it a daring move, which probably was, okay, he, it's not a very good move, actually. Even then, they probably knew <laughs> it wasn't necessary at all. Okay, so white took the rook, and now black didn't even bother taking the time to recapture. Knight takes a8 was actually, uh, maybe objectively speaking, not so bad for black now. He's down the exchange, but uh, still the white king is very weak. Uh, the, a the h file is is uh, is open and. Uh, the same kind of thing is happening, but Blackburn was not going to back down. He continued his plan. He developed the knight. He wants to take e4 and just take his target is to take g3 pawn. And when that pawn is gone, the queen will have access to h4 and so on. So white took on b6. Okay, now he's up a lot of material. Of course, what do you think black played here? Did he take back on b6? No, of course not. What do you think he did? Continuing to throw his pieces in to create this total melee. 94, yeah, 94. So what's the material? Already down a rook and a minor piece, too, right? Rook and a minor piece. But white king is the target, so we're not, black's not worrying about 
material. He's not counting pieces. That's, that's, for, that's for other people, not for Blackburn. So white here, oops, white uh, took on d7. I know you probably saw it. I didn't mean to show it. Anyone see? Uh, actually, okay. So white took on d7, which is an obvious move, but uh, knight e6 would have refuted black's attack. And it's not really such a hard move to find. Blackburn would not have played this way if it was a tournament game. He was actually a really good player. Uh, but this, um, he missed, but uh, knight e6 would have broken the line, with, would have, now white removes the knight on e4, right? So black takes back, uh, and then queen takes e4, and it's just, uh, black just loses by material. So if, like, if he takes the knight, then queen takes g4, white's up a rook, bishop g5 is uh, also coming to further, uh, further simplify. f3 pawn is, there's nothing for black, he can resign here. All white had to find was knight e6 check. But remember this, I mean, even, I mean, in the, in a haze of, whis of cigar smoke and vapors from whiskey, even you might miss knight e6 check. So <laughs> okay, so he, he didn't find that. He, pl he took on d7. Okay, so black took on g3. Okay, so, uh, so now black's got some serious threats. Rook h1 is one of the main ones. So white really has to do something. It's a desperate position. I mean, rook h1 and rook h2 is next uh, is also, queen h4 of course is a threat. I mean, rook h1, king f2, rook h2, and if he takes the knight, queen h4, also rook h1 and taking the rook is kind of a, th so there's, and, and also queen h4, there's many threats. So white really has to do something immediately here. So he'd played knight e6 check, only now, unfortunately, a move too, uh, too late. Now he, he said, okay, I have to do something. That's what happened. But let's see if, if, if he could have defended himself here. Blackburn recommended, he it should some, okay, here I'll, he said, he said something must be done, but perhaps knight g2 would have been better, slightly better. So knight to g2, let's see what happens after knight to g2. Okay, so the idea is if, if takes, then there's no more attack really. The pawn is, then white can take on f7, something like that. Black, remember, black is down so much material, white can give something back. So instead, check, king f2, and now the, the best looks like knight e3. And there's some, you know, the king is wandering out. Well, we have three moves. We can take the knight, we can go king e1, or we can go king e3. We can sacrifice the queen. Queen takes c4, but then after queen takes c4, black can just do this. And here, well, white still has more than enough material for the queen, right? If three minor pieces and a rook, but two knights are both under attack, black's threatening queen e2 followed by queen takes g2 checkmate. And the pawns are really strong. The white king is exposed, so this is losing for white. So for instance, I have to defend against queen e2. So if knight e3, though, don't even have to take the knight on d7. It's not running away. So g3, and the main, well, black threatens to come in with queen d3 and then queen e2, or queen h4 also is, is a, those are the two main threats. And these two pawns are too much for white to handle. These guys are not playing. And the knight on d7 is also lost. So this is a winning position for black. Um, so, so much for sacrificing the queen. What if, if king e1? There's a cool move here. F takes g2. Still, black is down a rook and a minor piece, but it's getting a new queen in a moment. So the get, that's, that's over, right? What if the king steps up? Let's see if someone can. What does black play here? Anyone see? If it's a force mate in two, three, four, four moves. Sometimes we, we, how do we find a forced mate? It's easy to start looking by looking, okay, you have knight c5 check. So in the real game, you know, you win the queen, that's gonna be winning for black, obviously. But listen, we're trying to find a forced mate, the most accurate way. You, you would start thinking of, well, discoveries, but. Six. Yeah, my most, my, th that's the thing you wanna do then. I would look for a second discovery, say, oh, there's discovered check, but then I would, no, I want to include another piece in the attack. So bishop h6, very good. 
Knight f4 is the only move, right? King can't go back. Then what does black play? Yeah, bishop f4. Yeah, the discoveries, of course, there's a lot of discoveries that win. But we want to force mate, so we're going to take. King has to take, and now what? Hmm? Queen g5. Queen g5, yeah, queen g5. King has to take. F5 mate. <laughs> so that's a nice variation, right? So luckily for Gustav, for, for Neumann, he, he didn't play knight to g2, or Blackburn might have played that. What if he tries running with his king? Well, then we have, again, this check. The king can't cross the e-file, and if he takes here, checkmate. Okay, so what else do we have? Rook takes f3 was interesting to try to just give back uh, some material. Remember, white has a huge excess of material here. If, if uh, takes, then, I don't know, king f2 or something like that, and king is running away, and black start, maybe, maybe even there black's winning, but this, rook h1, King g2, queen h4. This is crushing because uh, queen h2 is coming next. So, so that didn't quite work. Uh, also, if king f2, queen e1, by the way, after rook h1, king, f, king f2, queen e1 check, and then queen g1. Uh, so there's actually this move knight e5. This is really crazy now, uh, what's going on here. Well, this is, so now, now the idea is, okay, if queen h4, if black enacts his plan, then knight takes f7 and knight takes h8. And there's no mate, right? The king runs away and there's so much material to give back that it is. So if pawn takes, then white takes back with check. King has to move. And now we can, uh, now we can remove some pieces. It removes these pawns. And remember, still a lot of material. If, if black does the check like before, now king f2. I don't know if this, I mean, this is, looks like black's running out of material here. So if he takes, if he, uh, if he takes the rook, though, queen takes, and again, he doesn't have a lot of material left to give checkmate. Black's just lucky that he has a draw. Check, king g2, queen h4, threatening queen h2 mate. Queen takes g3. Can anyone tell me what black's move is now? Rook g1. Rook g1, yeah. And in this position, well, it's two pieces in a rook against the queen, but the white king is open. So bl definitely black's not worse. It's most likely looks kind of drawish, but I guess maybe black is even, let's see, I don't know, knight g2, bishop e5. I mean, definitely black can give perpetual at some point. Uh, probably it's drawish, but I, I don't know. It's... Anyway, that, that wasn't a win for black, at least. Uh, clearly, at least. So that's... So instead, it, bishop takes e5 looks better. Pawn takes, and now queen h4. White has only one check, king c8. And now white's up rook and two minor pieces, but the black pieces are hovering around the white king. Queen h2 mate is a threat. Looks like it's just... Uh, I don't see a defense. I don't know. King f2, knight e4 at minimum. Or actually, king f2, knight f5 would, be, would lead to mate because we cover e3. So, yeah. That was, looks like the best try, but it, oops, it looks like, so now instead, white did this and played queen g6. So here, he's got the counter threat of bishop to g5. And he's ready to try to remove the pawn on g4. Anyone see black's next move here? This is, this is the point uh, where came it, the player who had white was, he was uh, anticipating a win. But, yeah? Uh, 92. 92, uh, then king f2. I don't want to make, if I, oh. yeah, if I make the move, it's going to show you the correct answer, I think. So, <laughs> this, uh, yeah, but king f2, uh, and uh, king goes away to e3. 
King h4, King e3, Bishop h6, King d3. King is running away, and uh, Black King is not. I mean, there's so much material also, and the Black King's not they're very safe. So that's a good try, but. Um, Hmm? Rook h2, yeah, very good. Rook h2. Oops, sorry. Rook h2. This was, so they have the description here according to Blackburn. He said he, he confessed that he has, he didn't see this when he played c6, which was, of course, <laughs> not at all forced from the point he played c6. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but uh, nothing, nothing venture, nothing win. So, uh, and you can read the rest. He, uh, well, you can read it on the screen. Oh, anyway, yeah, he, Herr Neumann gave a slight start when he played this move, turned around, looked at McDonnell, who we'll see, assuming we have, yeah, we'll have time for the next game. Uh, also one of the best players in the world at the time, who shrugged, and then he shrugged his shoulders, smiled, but it was a sickly kind of smile. So the threat is mate, rook g2, right? That's a response to bishop g5, for instance, or any, any move, you know. King takes h2 is met by queen h4, king g1, knight e2, mate. So meanwhile, yeah, if, so rook takes f3 was his only try. I mean, there's, uh, there's nothing else white can, white can do. Um, also rook f2, rook h1, mate. So rook takes f3 was the only only move to try. Pawn takes, again threatening rook g2. And if queen takes g3, then also rook g2 wins the queen. And this position is just lost for white. He, he, he'll lose the knight on d7, and um, white will have a rook and bishop against the queen and, and a pawn, but also his king is wide open, so it's, it's no point in playing this. So he played king takes h2 allowing a much more entertaining finish. Queen h4 check, king g1, queen h1, king f2, queen g2. Has to go to e3 because if king e1, queen e2 is mate. Now knight f1, discovering an attack on the white queen. King f4, queen takes g6, and now the game finished up. A black's attack continues, and of course this, so now he only has a rook for the queen, and uh, then resigned at this point. So this was uh, this was an entertaining game. Not exactly correct. But really, the 96 check that miss that the both players missed. Really, the only huge turn of fate, uh, change of fate in this game. Um, but uh, so okay, let's let's see now. The next one. McDon uh, McDonald against La Bourdonnais, London, 1834. So this was, these were the two best players of the day. Uh, this was, of course, somewhat earlier than like, the Blackburn game was, eight, I forgot, 1870 or so. This was, uh, these, were, these were two players that were before the time of Morphy, um, around the same time as Staunton, I think. I'm not sure, maybe a little bit after Staunton. And uh, so this was the heart of the romantic period of chess. And these two players played, I don't know how many games, a huge number of games. They played an almost unending match. Uh, this was uh, their fourth match in London, uh, unending series of matches, let's say. This was, I guess, their fourth match, uh, their fourth match, the 16th game. But anyway, this, uh, okay, so McDonald was white, de La Bourdonnais was black, knight c6. D4, C, D, knight takes D4, E5. Who knows what the name of this opening is now? Anyone know? Kalashnikov. Kalashnikov, yeah. So this is actually, well, you, you can find a lot of games in Sveshnikov, related opening, with knight F6 and knight C3 included. Uh, the, the player that Sveshnikov is named after, Yevgeny Sveshnikov, actually later uh, came to prefer this this version. The, the really the big difference is that after the main move knight to b5, the move that's always played now, d6, white doesn't have to play knight c3, it has, has the move c4, which is the main difference. Well, what does black gain by this, by giving white that extra option? Well, the difference is for, for black that after knight c3, a6, knight a3, there's a number of different options, both in this position and after b5, knight d5. So in this position, you've got 
uh, bishop e7 and bishop e6, which are especially bishop e7 is a, uh, is a, is a popular move. It's uh, pretty reasonable here. And there's also b5, knight d5, um, which is b4 is a threat. So, and then instead of knight f6, which would transpose to Sveshnikov, there's knight g to e7, and there's knight c to e7. So this is just some opening information. It doesn't have anything to do with this, this game because, uh, well, white took on c6, which is not, not a move you would see at the top level nowadays, really, or any level practically. But I don't think the players were completely, I mean, they, there, were, there were other games played at the time with knight to b5. So, th of course, knight takes c6 positionally is a little bit incorrect because it strengthens black's pawn structure, but white wanted uh, more free piece play and probably mm, he, he knew that, you know, anyway, the funny thing is that this opening almost completely disappeared after the early t 20th century. Lasker played it a few times, actually. But it almost completely disappeared for a long time until Sveshnikov's time, because basically in the classical chess, uh, d5 square, creating a weakness on d5 uh, was considered questionable. I mean, Black created this weakness, and what, what for? But well, he gained some time, he gained solidity in the center. Uh, so, but you know, White took on c6, so if, if people were playing this way, everyone would play this opening. Black took back, uh, bishop c4. He wants free play, but black has this center now, and it's going to eventually become useful. So knight f6, and bishop g5. Another move that looks a little bit, mm, I don't know, a little bit weird. Knight c3 looks more natural, but I guess it allows the pin bishop b4. Anyway, white went bishop g5. And here black played a very quiet move, bishop e7. Just breaking the pin, preparing to castle. Uh, it's, looks, uh, it's pretty reasonable, but I think uh, I would consider the move h6 here, because if white takes on f6, black gets two bishops uh, for, and it's a very good bishop, the dark squared bishop is coming to c5, and if white doesn't take, then you have to contend with uh, things like g5 and knight takes c4, or some, something like this, and if here there's a check, looks like check here, and th this can't be good for white. Bishop c3, knight c3, bishop g7, d5 also coming, and white's White's position is just, you know, so h6, well, okay, he didn't play that. He would play bishop e7. Uh, so white now played queen e2, which also looks a little strange to me. Knight c3, keeping control over d5, keeping better control over d5, uh, looks more uh, more natural. He might have been afraid of, I mean, knight e4, we take, and bishop g5, knight d6, and knight f7. So that doesn't, you know, that's not a... Thing, thing. So I'm, I'm showing this variation. That is, takes, takes, bishop takes, knight d6, and knight f7 doesn't work for black. So I don't know why he didn't play knight c3, but queen e2. Okay, black now played very aggressively, hitting in the center with d5. Uh, so uh, he um, he's gaining control of the center and with tempo too. So that's very good. White decided to take on f6. Um, rather than take on d5, which looks more natural. Take on d5, maybe give a check on b5. Black's going to be somewhat better, but he took on b f6. I'm not saying this white's play is very good at this point. It's not. Black took back. Now bishop b3. So he, he avoided taking on d5, but he gave up an important bishop in the kind of position where it's going to be very useful for black. So black castled, white castled. And now, now a very good move for black. Well, what would you play? This move looks kind of, you know, uh, the play has been a little bit silly up to this point, but uh, this move looks like a strong move, typical of modern chess, or well, chess later than this time. Yeah? Um, a5. A5, yeah. He played A5 with the threat of bishop A6 and also A4. The pawn is going to become a, a nuisance and it's going to help the bishop to develop. So a very strong move. So here, white has to deal with these two threats. And he doesn't really want to play a4, bishop a6, c4, because that's going to lead to real, really ugly position and problems on the b file and so on. So what should white play here? Anyone got an idea? Yeah? Yeah? What's that? C4. C4, yeah, perhaps. But c4, um, I'm, I'm a little concerned about a4, bishop moves, and... 
Yeah, maybe it's, it's possible because if it takes on c4, knight c3, but then a3, uh, because he can't take, right? Bishop a6. So knight c3, a3. I don't know. It looks like white's position is collapsing. But it's, it's a good try. I, I don't know what else we do here. Looks losing for white. Yeah. Um, so c4, yeah, it's a try, but it doesn't look like it really works. So what he did is he took on d5 because he wanted, he needed to sit, move his rook to d1. And so he took on d5, so he'll be able to go rook d1 and then meet a4 with bishop takes d5. But actually, he just doesn't want to take on d5. That's probably why he took on f6 earlier, is to avoid doing it. He should try, he should actually play this, and then after a4, what could white play? Save the bishop. Bishop c4. Bishop c4, yeah. So actually he had this. With some pressure on black center, but black is better here. He can play bishop e6. Actually we could take and bishop takes and knight c3. Yeah, I mean this is... Yeah, this is... This is a... Maybe you have to go bishop b7, and then if, yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe black has to go d4, I don't know. But this is, uh, this would leave white in the game here. Uh, so here, probably not a4 is actually what black should really, yeah. Anyway, he went, uh, he, he went immediately, he took on d5, and then rook d1. Now d4, and this is a different, if we imagine this position where black still has the pawn on c6 and, and uh, white has a pawn on e4, that's a different <coughs> matter. But here, here black can do this. Obviously, if doesn't want to allow, I guess, takes and knight c3, and this is, I don't know, this is, this is not good for black. So he played d4, but black is now, his, his center pawns are very strong, and he has a clearly better position. Uh, so, white here played c4, and I think this makes things a little bit worse. Uh, c3 is still, still good for black, but uh, at least a little bit more pressure on the center. c4, now black has a passed pawn, and uh, okay, so queen b6, strong move also, getting off the d-file and creating some threats on the b-file. So white noticed that black wasn't actually threatening a4. He played bishop c2. His problem, though, is he wants to develop his knight, and if knight to d2, then actually black could t take the pawn on b2. But he did this first, and uh, so of course uh, you see what happens if queen takes b2, right? What does white play now? Someone else? We haven't heard from him yet. Bishop yeah. yeah, bishop takes h7, right? So okay, he's not going to fall for that. So he played bishop b7. So, okay, knight to d2. And now, now takes on b2 also is not so good um, because white could, uh, white could check on h7 and rook b1, regain the, regain the, uh, the piece, and um, still it's not best. So black just played rook to e8. He wants to play e4. His main goal here is to break this sort of semi-blockade. He wants to push his pawns forward in the center. This is, so these two strong center pawns, one of them passed, supported by two bishops. Okay, so white played knight e4. Okay. So black should preserve his bishop, so he played bishop d8. White played c5. He's doing everything he can to get some sort of counterplay. Queen c6. Threatening f5. This checkmate on g2. So white played f3. And now black played bishop e7. So he wants to stop knight to d6, of course, uh, which is now a threat. Knight to d6 will be annoying. Uh, kind of a threat, yeah. And uh, so he also pressures the c5 pawn. White played rook c1. I, I was thinking probably bishop c7 looks more natural to me. But it's, his move is also, also good. Bishop c7, rook c1. F5. Now this is, I, I mean, this move, maybe, maybe black could, could start with king h8, but this move is really 
leads to some very fascinating play. So black has his long-term advantage as his center pawn as his bishop, but now white's going to win some material. I'm assuming that de la Bourdonnais saw white's next couple of moves and, and realized that uh, uh, he was going to get a very strong attack. But anyway, white did whatever he could. He checked on c4. If he just moves his knight away, black takes c5, um, most likely, and uh, have a uh, very strong uh, he'll be, he, his center pawns will just crush white eventually. But he played queen c4 check, king h8, bishop a4. So queen is under attack, queen h6. So now white has to take the rook. Otherwise, again, black's position is just, uh, his position is going to be overwhelming without white getting some material for it. So if, if knight to d, uh, uh, sorry, he, he played knight to d6. If bishop takes e8, then pawn takes. And this is crushing for, for black. So for instance, uh, actually this is, just a second. I don't remember which what, what happened. Oh, this is what happened, sorry. If knight to d6, uh, black takes it. And after bishop takes e8, then bishop c7. And the idea is e4 coming up next. Um, the bishop's hanging on e8, and e4 is also threat. So this is, this is also not good for white. So he, he instead, he, he took immediately. Black took here, and now c, uh, c6. Uh, if, uh, if bishop d7, then black checks here, and he takes on f3 with the winning attack. Taking on f2 is coming next. The bishop on b7 is also taking part in the attack. And if white blocks it out, then uh, it's going to be checkmate in a couple moves. Rook f2, followed by queen f3, or uh, or a discovery with the rook of king g1, rook e2, and then checkmate in a couple moves. So that's uh, um, okay. So sorry, took took. So he played c6, shutting out the bishop at least. Um, so black took here, and now white white had to defend against a threat. So what do you think happens if white takes on b7? Anyone see? This is the same pattern, so it, it won't be too hard. Yeah? Uh, queen, e3. queen e3, yeah. Queen e3. King h1. Oh, takes. takes. And then once again, rook, rook f2. Yeah. And then checkmate either queen f3, or for instance here, we got this move, and then queen f3 and queen g2. So. So white had to defend against queen e3, defend against the, ta the cap. He needed to defend the second rank, so he played rook c2. So here, check. And now rook f2 was by far the best chance here. And black would, uh, so for instance, the idea is if, if black takes on g2, then queen e2 and white defends. This is not good for black. Black's down the exchange, and his attack is drying up. So, for instance, white's threatening to trade queens and take on f8, and, and so that, that's not good. Here, uh, black could play bishop c8. I think there's even, I think there's some even, even some, some idea like, like this, and d3 is, uh, d3 is coming next. Uh, if queen d3, then And this, this is, yeah. <laughs> now e2 next. This is so bishop a6. That was actually, that's actually very. Anyway, this this was uh, at least much better defense. Rook f2, uh, but white played king h1. Okay. So now, what do you think black plays here? If we take g2, the rook takes back, and white's king is pretty safe. We need these pawns, actually, it turns out. Yeah. Oh, F2. F2, yeah. Oh, sorry, he played this first. <laughs> I think he could go F2, but uh, he played this first. Now the bishop on e8 is hanging. Bishop d7, but now F2. OK. So anyone see the threat? Like, what if white takes here? What does black play now? Yeah? 
Mm -hmm. Queen d1, queen f1. Queen d1, f1. Yep, queen d1 and f1, and black wins. So, so f2. So white had to defend against that, so he played rook f1. There's uh, queen, queen f1 was uh, met by, oh, do you see what happens after queen f1? Who sees the good move for black here? Yeah? Bishop a6, very good. Bishop a6. Queen is hanging, has nowhere to go. Blocking doesn't do any good. And if queen takes, then again, queen e1. If white takes, pawn takes, and then mate. And if queen f1, once again, this move. So, and then queen takes, and then f1. So nice variation. OK, so white played rook f1. So now d3. So black is down the exchange here, uh, but his pawns are marching forward. d3. White played rook c3, hoping to attack the pawn. Maybe technically better to go here, but we'll see that after simply capture and then e4, it's going to be sort of like the game, but tempo doesn't even matter for, for, for wasn't, wasn't, wouldn't be enough to save white. So instead, white played rook c3, black took. Uh, so now white, white took back, creating his own passed pawn to, on the seventh rank, but it's not going anywhere. If rook takes c3, then queen e2 would be a good answer, threatening the rook on f1, and black is winning. So white took e4, protecting the pawn. And so now we've got this really unique position. White's, white's, down the ex uh, white's up the exchange, has this, his own pawn. But these three pawns are going to defeat all of white's pieces. Queen c8, white does everything he can, because what else is he going to do here? Black's doing the same moves no matter what, which we're going to see in a moment. Queen c8, black blocked with the bishop. So he's keeping his rook on f8. Oh, rook to d8 was also possible, I think, but this was good. Now white played queen c4. He couldn't find any, anything, uh, anything here. So for instance, queen takes and then rook c8 doesn't work because black can just defend with queen g5 uh, or queen b6. So, um, so white went back with the queen to c4. Also, if he played queen c5, black could trade queens and then e3. And there's no stopping the pawns. So white went queen c4, queen e1, rook c1. So queen takes f1 as the threat, and rook c, uh, queen can't be captured either. So rook c1, d2. And white white's now pretty desperate, because rook is under attack. <coughs> white played queen c5, so the best try, threatening the rook on f8. And if king g8, white can give a check then. But black plays rook g8. He doesn't even need his rook on the f-file anymore. Both rook and bishop are just playing defense. But um, queen and pawns are going to win everything. So white went rook to d1 now. The rooks are blockading all they can. They protect each other. There's no queen takes d1 be because there's no rook on f8 anymore. We don't have that anymore. But it's still not enough. What do you think black plays now? Anyone, anyone know? Uh, yeah, okay. E3. Yeah, e3. So, yeah, e3, and now these pawns are are going to uh, just break through. Queen c3, white tried. So, now what? Let's be careful. What is? What do we play now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good. So e, if e2. Immediately, then White's now attacking. Uh, White's now attacking the Queen three times, all by different X-rays. But takes, and and now we, what do we play here? Huh? Queen takes. Yeah, not Rook takes, but Queen takes. And even this is winning for Black, though. It's up a piece, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah. So, but yeah, queen takes f1, or queen takes d1 as he played in the game. Rook takes d1. e2 is a much more aesthetic way to finish the game. Three pieces on the seventh rank, three pawns on the seventh rank. You don't see that very often. Of course, with queen takes d2, black plays f1 queen. Uh, so that was, um, 
that was the end of this. This is a famous final position. Uh, I think that the game has some instructional value. You see how Black built up his play, though. Uh, none of these games can be expected to be perfect. It was a whole different atmosphere, and people were trying to forge their own paths, uh, uh, which now, nowadays when we play, we have so much uh, experience from other people's experience that we can call upon. And back then, they didn't have it. And there were only really just a few chess books and that were that, that were that existed, and so it was it was a different different uh, different world for chess than nowadays. We spend time preparing deep into the game on a computer. <laughs> so, uh, anyone have any questions at all? No. <laughs> okay. So, yep. Okay. Thank you. Oh yeah.